We're recording. Welcome, welcome everyone to the sellout show where we are always sold out. I am Diana Guerin. I am the co-founder of Trade Show Makeover where we help companies stop leaving money on the trade show floor. <laughs> that sounds so weird. All right, Sean, you go. Hey, I'm Sean Carroll Sandy. I'm the Chief Revenue Officer of the Selling Agency where we coach humans how to sell to other humans. Because selling like you dread picking up the phone and talking to people makes people dread responding to you and they're not going to buy from you. No, no, not going to do it. And today, speaking of that, right, um, I was trying to make it relative to our guests in the segue. Uh, we have a special guest today, all the way from Boston. Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Leahy with Link Squared. Yes. I, is it? I never. Is it linked or Link Square? Link, Link Squares. Link. I want to get the D in there, like LinkedIn, but that's not right. And <laughs> today we're going to talk about let's have fun with prospecting. I love yeah. prospecting. Diana, do you love prospecting? Well, you know, I'm a prospecting beast. So yeah, that was an when, I'm, when I'm in the zone, I love prospecting. Yes. Yes. All right. And Jackie, do you love prospecting? Sean, Diana, I was put on this earth to interrupt people's days and start conversations that make a difference. Oh, yes. That's so Oh, funny. my God. I love it so much. <laughs> well, so let's jump into that. So Jackie, first of all, um, we've been tracking you down for quite some time and wanted you on the show. And um, there's some, you know, there's a, something that Sean's going to reveal in just a minute about um, some content that she's produced around your magic. But so what, so I want to drill in on that idea of making a difference. So you say you're out to interrupt somebody's day, have conversations that make a difference. Yeah. How does a salesperson go about the business of making a difference in somebody's day? You gotta, you gotta really think about the other person. What's their day? I, what's their life like? Like, what question would they love to answer? What, like, what would make them? What would make an impact where it could be like, huh? And then all of a sudden, it has to. It makes them pause. And be like, huh? Wow. Like, think. Like, and so when I'm creating messaging or cold call scripts and blah, 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 it's not about like what's going to eke me by, what's going to make people not like yell at me. It's like, I, hey, if they're yelling at me, but I made a difference, like, good. Like, great. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I think that's really important. Um, just in reference, like Keenan was, uh, did another video on LinkedIn. He said, absolutely, positively, 100%, no scripts. And I get what he's saying, but I think that, I think that the, ab again, why are we talking in absolutes? Why do people use absolutes? I mean, it's just like, you can't take that back, right? Well, Trish came down and gave him the smackdown, so I don't know. I like to think of them as formulas, you know, but, but part of the formula could be what are their problems and what would, you know, what would make them think about how would I respond to this and what would they want to talk about? And, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be different for everyone. I actually said this the other day, like for my particular client that I know really, really, really well, one of the things that I have to think about is what do they want to be right about? Cause I'm dealing with owner operators, manager and partners of a, of a, you know, of a business that can't get their sales team to do what they did to make the business successful. So for them, one of the things that I need to show up with and think about is what do they want to be right about? But I love that you, how do you find the answers to those questions or how do you know what those questions are when you're doing? Yeah. Your I'm a big proponent of, do you know the disc wheel, the personality types? Mm -hmm. uh, what are you? Do you want to guess? I'm well, getting you're an ID, right? Uh, yeah, I, ID. Yep. So I live in the world of, and I've got a big disc wheel and ever had the whole sales team do the little quiz and we're all up there um, kind of really, really talking about that. Um, so I, I know I live in the world of enthusiasm and action. And I know that 
my VP, our VP of sales lives in the world of action and results, right? Mm -hmm. So we're pretty aligned, but not a hundred percent, but I have to always think about it from, if I'm going to be asking him a question or I want him to do something, I'm going to come in. I tell my team like, okay, we're dealing with general counsels, CFOs mainly. Mm -hmm. um, so somewhere between D and C or C, D. So that's dominance and conscientiousness. Right. Um, we do the bird theory here. So it's like the eagle owl or the owl eagles. Um, I've not heard that one before. Are you <laughs> what, are, what are the other birds that are involved here? So there's owls, eagles. What else do you have? Um, I as a parrot. Party parrot. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, S for stability, they're the dove. They um, care about people and everyone being supportive and like buy-in. No, we need them. We need them. Okay, Somebody's got to be the dove. It's not us. <laughs> it's, it's, not it's not me. It's not me. It's not me. Um, but yeah, I like, I was the mascot in college. Like I live in the world of enthusiasm. Like that, that's what lights me up. Um, yeah. but I know who I'm talking to. It's kind of, it's going to be weird if you find an I general counsel or an I CFO yeah. they're out there, but it's, it's weird. Um, right. so usually I'm talking to, to, especially when they get to like CFO or, um, general counsel, their, their D is highly honed. And so what they want more than anything is results and what they fear kind of what they absolutely don't want is to be taken advantage of or be right. appearing weak. Um, at the same time, you have to understand like how they receive the world. So what I tell my team who, you know, they're 22, they're straight out of college or you know, I'm like, okay, think of a D as you know what the advice is if you're swimming and there's a sh like a shark comes up to you, like a, like a great white shark. Do you know what you're supposed to do? Plunk him on the nose. Yes, exactly. Like so hit him on the nose. Your CFOs on the nose? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I just unload that one. Unpack that one. Tell us. <laughs> so just, you, you got to come in strong, right? So if you come in right. like, so, da, 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 I, don't, I don't have time for this. I don't know what you're going to talk to me about, but all I know is that I don't have time for this. And so right. you come in kind of strong, like, hey, I'm calling about deep search and metadata extraction for contracts. And they're like, okay. Can we do this? Like, can I be a CFO? And yeah, call her. And yeah, just, yeah. Okay. I'm right. a CFO, call her Jackie. I'll have, to, I'll have to put on my, um, my owl or am I an eagle? Um, yeah, so GCs are like, they really care about accuracy and being right and not being ta taken care of. So it's like, you need to have the exact answer right away, like, boom. Okay, so right, I'm, I'm in the middle of general counseling. I'm probably, I don't know, marking up a master service agreement. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Diana. This is Jackie Leahy from Link Squares. How have you been? Hi, <laughs> who? Who is this? This is Jackie from Link Squares. Diana, the reason I'm calling is to see if deep search and metadata extraction for contracts would make a difference for you. So most companies I'm talking to are storing their signed agreements in Share Drive, Google Drive, Dropbox, or SharePoint. But when they have to find specific clauses and terms, they have to dig through those folders, find the right contract, then scan the document for information. It's pain in the neck. So instead. We're a central repository for all of your signed contracts. Everything synced to Link Squares gets ingested and indexed. And this tr transforms your data into a fully searchable and reportable source of truth. Diana, wow. this That's sound. Exactly like, what I've been looking for. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Do you have your calendar handy? <laughs> I got it. And they, and they sit there and listen through the whole thing, huh? Um, I bonk them in the nose and they're stunned enough to like, be like, I don't know who this person is, but okay. And, and <laughs> so that's why I kind of, and then I bridge into like, Hey, this is the pain statement. This is what we do. And then if, 
and I can kind of like, I'm very like tactile. So I can feel if on the other end, they're like, I'm listening. Like, <laughs> and then I purposely kind of like slow it down. And like, when I get to the everything is synced to link squares. Like I slow down a little bit because then like, I know I've got them and I'm like in their D world. I'm like, yeah. So what I'm, hearing, <laughs> what I'm hearing from all this is not only have you studied, I mean, this, your, your product is not irrelevant here, but it's, that's not what we're talking. That's not what you're focusing on, right? You're not focusing on your product in these first calls. You're focusing on um, you've studied your subject, right? We're talking about like hunter and prey, but you've studied your subject so well that you know what communication style they will receive. And then you've studied your craft so well that you know how to deliver the communication, even down to the speed at which you make your final impact in that first statement, right? Yes. Yes. I don't think people do that a lot. Diana, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think people do that a lot. Well, she's actually thought through the entire process. You know, she's really thought about who she's talking to, what they're going to care about, um, how they, yeah, I, I just think, you know, thinking through that whole process, understanding who you are as a person and what your strengths are, because obviously it, you can still be a salesperson if you're not a ID. It's just, you have to think about, you know, what's my style that's going to mesh with these people. I mean, if you have a C, in your mix coming into this conversation is going to be you're going to be a natural match for their vibration right so you just kind of i know that sounds really weird <laughs> we'll start playing no it. it's it's true um so erin on my team uh she i knew she was an owl when i was interviewing her um she she's a career switcher she was uh she was an accountant she worked for a controller um before she she came to link squares and exactly like she's going to take the content and the approach and put it in Erin's style. And, and you're exactly right. So she ends up having conversations that are different than mine. Mm -hmm. um, like the, the flavor, the feel, like she can go right into like the details and accuracy and she can, her talk time is much longer than mine. Hmm. Like she gets people to like really talk about their process and pains and da 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 da. Um, whereas I'm like, I'm going to punch you, book a time, bye like <laughs> <laughs> I love that I mean well so I've been a prospect of yours and I'm trying to think did I feel punched in the nose I don't know if I felt punched in the nose well you were well, a different well, persona a, right you were a, diff a different company so it's a different yeah a different style huh you're not a C no I'm no I you're an ID. I you're an ID you're so so at my last company, um, I, we were selling an e-learning platform um, for learning as a business. So I was hunting people who sell training, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, Sean, you were one of my victims, I mean prospects. <laughs> um, the, the most fun one in that I definitely gave a run for my money was Jeb. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you got Jeb on the phone? We, I, I sold Jeb. That's awesome. In the, yeah. Guess how I got him? How? An email. And he was like, this is the, f I never respond to emails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, and he called me. I'm, I, it, it happened, so, like, literally I sent the email and he called me. And like, I, I was on the other line. So I called him right back and I got him. And I was like, oh my, and he run for my money. Like, Talk about. Well, tell me, tell me, tell me about the ID. ID. Like he's an ID. He's and and what's great about Jeb is he knows who he is, right? He's like, listen, this is exactly what I need. I know that I'm not gonna think about this after this conversation. So show me it right now. I'm like, Jeb, I don't do the demos. <laughs> he's like, I don't care. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I got him on a an actual demo uh, a couple hours later with our with um, Christian, if you're watching. And uh, by, the, by the end, he was like, yep, yep. And he like got his actual minions on it. He was like, yep, I'm yep. So now the, um, um, his online learning, the um, Sales Gravy Academy is on Thought Industries. Nice, yes. very good. High five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> well, you you talk about I, it's so funny because I think people that love what they do and love selling, like Diana and I have our favorite stories. I have my favorite stories about being thrown out of buildings and chased by security guards and, you know, you know, arm wrestling with a material structure. Like I, I love these stories. They live in my, you know, my happy places and stuff like that. Cause I love what I do. And Diana has a ton of them too. It sounds like you just really, really, really love what you do. You were put on earth to do this, right? Yeah. And how did you get yeah. there? <laughs> how do I add it? I mean, the path, not your parents. Oh, like, <laughs> I was like, well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's um, a whole other conversation. That's a whole other conversation. Yeah. Um, so I was a kindergarten teacher after college. I did Teach for America. That's I have to tell you, the best, the best salespeople, Jill Conrad, Alice Hyman, the guy that I worked with at Volunteer Match, Walter all Poppy, of them, me? school teachers. Mm hmm young people school teachers what is the, what is that connection see now i was never a school teacher so i i'm limited in my capacity but what is it about being a school teacher that translates so well to selling i think because you realize that if you want to have an impact if you want to make a difference you don't have all the control you have to figure out how to create that listening how, what what processes what structures what routines what instruction method methodologies work and and get you those results which is when they go take that ridiculous um exam at the end of the year like what will the results be mm -hmm. and so for kindergarten that was um, I was teaching in Levine, Arizona, which is southwestern um, Phoenix, and it was the fastest growing zip code in the second fastest growing state at the time. So it was 2004. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a brand new school. Um, the I had 45 kids' names on my roster for the first day. I think like 60 showed up. None of like half of which were actually on my list. It was mayhem. It was mayhem, right? And the in Arizona, it was the letter naming proficiency exam. So like literally they had to name what letter is, was which. And I was, so basically you think about it as like, okay, what can I do to make these <laughs> four-year-olds who can't tie their shoes? I had to teach them how to blow their nose. Like <laughs> <laughs> how do I make it so they can do this at the end of the year? So it's, it's, it, it's not about, how I feel. It's not about like, they don't listen to me. It's not about, oh, no one's, nobody sits in their seats. Um, it's about, hey, it, it is, it is what it is. Do what you can with what you got. <laughs> like, it's, re it, it, it's right there. It's not like, oh, well, I need, if only I had this, or if, if only I had that, it's like, so how did you get from teaching kindergarten to selling? Well, I was done with kindergarten, with teaching after three years. I was totally burned out. Go figure. A lot of noses to teach to blow. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I wanted to get a job um, some, somewhere in like marketing or something. That was my undergrad. Um, but it was 2007 and mm. I couldn't get hired anywhere. Mm. What we didn't know was the the world was about to end. Um, I was in Manhattan and I couldn't get a job. And so I ended up being an apartment broker in Manhattan because you could just do it. And within six months, I was the number two agent in office of 60. Wow. And I was like, oh my God, this is, this is goal. Well, your personality is pretty infectious, so I can see why, you know, people would go with you and, and take a ride with you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. So I want to get back to this concept of, that's fantastic. Um, I want to get back to this concept of, like, the, the real tangible way that you craft a question that makes somebody think, like, how, or, or makes, or even the question makes a difference for them. So how do you, 
What's a, what's a real life example? You're calling on a CFO. What's a real life example of a question that you might ask that gets them enough interested in having that conversation with you? Knowing a little bit about what's going on in their worlds, especially if it's, you know that this company needs you. Um, so I, I, like Discover Org just um, acquired Zoom Info. Yeah. So I was, I was talking to the CFO of Zoom Info and I was like, hey, do you, what prep do you need to do on your current contracts to make this transition easier, right? That's a good question. Yeah. I mean, that's turns, it turns out he's, he's, he's not, he doesn't have to do anything because he's been relieved. Um, but it, he's had a, but we end up having a conversation and I'm like, okay, I'm I, now I know wherever he lands. Yeah. I'm like, Hey, remember me? <laughs> <laughs> hey there. <laughs> do you remember me? Cause we're going to have a hard conversation. I just want to put you in my pocket and carry you around all day, Jackie. Like, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I know. So, so did you know, Jackie, that you were the subject of a blog article that Sean Carroll Sandy wrote? Uh huh. Can we talk about it? Because I yes, yes. know this. I love you. Yes. All right. So, Sean, what was the blog article? What What was it that really captured you? So, what does excellent business development look like? Uh, I don't think a lot of people really know. People talk about prospecting and do this and do that, but I don't think people really know. I know in training, I didn't have a lot of good examples to show people. So in, in, in at her previous, you know, company, Jackie reached out to me and Cole called me, connected with me, emailed me. And her approach was persistent and consistent. And eventually she got me and it was just, it was great. I, and so after the fact, I was just so impressed with how she ran her business development process that I asked her if she could break it down for me and she did. So I wrote a blog post about it and I've used some of those touch points in training. So um, if you go to the sellingagency.com, the blog post is what does excellent business development look like? She sent me her screenshots. Um, you know, the, the four things that approach she nailed were she proved she had done her research and connected her value to my business. I don't give a crap about you until you can show me how you're relevant to me. And that's right. exactly what she's doing. Um, and then, I, you know, she used that multi-channel approach to find which channel I would respond in. And then she can continue to connect her responses to, uh, to my, to her, my responses to her value proposition. Um, so she, in this blog post, we document like, here's the initial contact. And, um, I tell you what made it great. And then her, follow-up and her follow-up and she in when I would say you know I've been so busy I haven't been able to get back to you she's like well that's exactly why you need us and then she connected back to her value proposition so that it just was it really impressed me that so much so that I was willing to have a conversation with her you know what the last touch point was was she just called me she just <laughs> picked up the damn phone she said I, I think it was an email my email she's like oh I found a phone number on your email and so I just called and I and I had intended to get back to her, but like every, you know, it's so funny working with salespeople. They're like, well, they didn't respond. They must not like me. They must not be interested. No, people are just freaking busy. Yeah. They're just busy. It is that simple. And so I've actually employed a lot of her cadence and a lot of um, her touch point process. And so it's really funny, Jackie is like, I have um, in this process now, I have a guarantee that 30% of the time, your prospect will apologize to you for not getting back to you sooner. That's exactly <laughs> what happens with the, 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 the multiple touch points, the persistence and the consistency people apologize. I'm so sorry. I know you've been trying to reach me. I haven't got back to you sooner. And then if you think about that, like they're apologizing to me for not responding to my emails when they never asked for it, but it's because they can connect with value too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so. and that's brilliant. We're going to put a link to that article in the show notes because you definitely got to, you definitely got to watch, you definitely have to read that. Um, it brought up a, so, so Sean, um, did you buy Link Square? No, this was the thought, thought industry. industry. Yeah. So that was, a, it was, it was not the right move for me at the time. And, um, but I definitely listened to the platform or listened to the demo and thought the platform was great. And um, who was it who, 
was it Christoph? Who? Christian. Christian. Yeah. Christian. Yeah. Christian. He was very nice, but he's no Jackie. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> just when he was, he, so what's great about him is that like, so smart and, and like, I would, I would get you right and I'd be like hey this is awesome okay just so you know I'm the friendly one he knows. <laughs> I'm the good cop he can get the stuff done though like like remember how good I'm making you feel right now <laughs> oh my gosh so now and so now you're a player coach at um yeah. Link Square right yeah so what's it like to coach other people what how what is it like to coach other people in prospecting and to get them up and running and up to speed and stuff? What are, what are, what are your, like the most common thing that they're challenged with your team members? Um, can I pause one second? I'm running a little over. Hold on. Sure. Oh, doing business. This has been a great show. It's been like a magnet for doing business today. I know. I get on, I get a call from a prospect I've been chasing down. <sighs> I haven't been chasing anybody now. Okay, sorry. All right, um, we're in. We'll edit that out. It'll be Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Good. <laughs> okay. Um, so what's it like coaching and yeah. bringing you out, right? So exactly. So um, I joined Link Squares almost a year ago. I've known the CEO for almost three years. Um, and it was just about kind of the right time to bring mm -hmm. me in. Um, and so he brought me in to source outbound opportunities. And the goal was for me to figure out a playbook that then I can deploy, like I can bring in, that I can codify and is replicable count onable and so that's what I've done um so with the help of uh outreach is incredible because it's really like zero ramp um everything is scalable like all of the the tested a b tested like iterations like the best messaging wins and I can just take an awesome fresh bd put them in send them off. Um, my very first, Claudia, my very first uh, BD at Link Squares booked her first meeting on the night of her first day. She was out bowling with her friends and, and someone replied to her LinkedIn. Um, <laughs> exactly. So, so it's like, we've got the playbook. And as long as you go in full force on this, it will work. Right. Mm. And, and so that's really powerful. Um, but then like, they're also really cool people. So they want to experiment. I'm like, go for it. Like make your, make your sequence or cadence um, and test, like test it. Is it working? Like, and you know what, that might be the next, what the whole team adapts. So it's very much like, try it, see if it works. And if it doesn't, um, like Erin was testing something last month and she's like, it did not work. So she could just go right back into the, we call it the big kahuna, right back to the big kahuna, get a results. And then this <laughs> month we did another patch test and it ended up being awesome. She was actually using Vidyard to do some videos. Um, but then she noticed. That, we love yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it. Um, but then she noticed it was a lot of them weren't getting delivered because it was getting caught in the spam filter. Right. So it's like, okay, now, okay, pivot back. So, but I'm back at the big kahuna and, and I'm thinking and I'm, so it's like, let's test, let's experiment. Let's like, I've got such awesome talent, like, and the big kahuna is one way that gets results, but it's definitely, it's probably not the best way. You know what I'm thinking, Sean? Are you on mute? I'm sorry. The train came by. I had to mute it. Like there's a train <laughs> between 930 and everyone. What do you think? I, I love that the big link squares allows you to engage your natural genius. Yes, exactly. That's giant. Uh, that's Diana's, her, her, her. I really uh, hope sales leadership is listening to this because every outstanding business development representative, sales development representative that we have on this show, the common thread is that their company allows them to engage their natural genius. Mm -hmm. 
And that's what you're doing for your team. And you're doing it for your team. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I love it. I love it. Well, we know you have got to go run and do some business. <laughs> yes. So we have, I have, I have one more question for you and it's this, the back of the sticky note question. And this one is way out of left field. Diana, I think you're going to appreciate this. And I just have a hunch about what I'm going to ask you. Um, what is your favorite Sesame street character as a kid? And yes, I'm going to ask you to do their voice because I just have a feeling you can. <laughs> Um, Grover. I knew it. Let it rip. I do know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Grover's an I. Oh, he is. He is absolutely an ID. He's yeah. so fun. Super Grover. Well, so there, there's just, there are people like, um, summer whom we went uh surfing with there are people that are willing to play with their voices and do this kind of stuff and i could see that you did and i just thought what would be something that would have such a memory on her i bet everybody watched sesame street growing up i knew that i knew grover had to be your favorite i just did and you know he has a book grover has a book didn't know the, it. there's a monster at the end of the book ah. Ah. and every and I, this was my, one of my favorite books growing up and I read it, my kindergarten classes were just like, they, they would demand I read it at least twice a week. <laughs> and like, it's, it's, the whole book is just like, do not turn the page. And then you turn the page, ah, you turned the page. <laughs> oh my God, I'm dying. Okay. You are definitely <laughs> the most awesome, funny, hilarious guest I think we've ever, yeah. ever, ever had. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on. I know we I know it's time for you to close some business, but um, this has been fantastic. Yeah. Thank you for being so great at what you do. Thank you for having passion for what you do. Um, thank you for taking such pride and joy in what you do and for helping other people find that. That deserves a round of applause. Right back at you two delicious divas. <laughs> delicious. We're divas. <laughs> That's, that is the first time I've been called a diva. Um, <laughs> So this is the disc test that you take that you take people through. Is it something that's free online that you that yeah. share in the notes? Or? Yeah, I send oh. people to the it's the one two three personality um, disc profile. Yeah, we it can put you, that online yeah. too. Yeah, but do you do the natural versus um, you know work personality? Mm, oh, I've I've yeah, I do think your your disc kind of merges and, and, and transforms depending on what role you're doing, the context. Yeah. Well, there's like, there's, there's, you can take and get what your natural personality is and then you can take, then it'll show you how you show up at work. And so a lot of times oh. they're at odds with each other. And like, I have a, um, a client, a friend and she runs a business and her natural personality and her discord way different than her work, what she needs to be. And oh. so she can out, she's great. It's a phenomenal business, but she's in a constant state of stress and adrenal fatigue. She cannot wait to sell this sucker and she will, but it's just such a, it's, it's so stressful because she's at odds with it. So that's something else oh. to go. We'll put a link in the show notes again. To yeah. This. yeah. Okay. Very important to know these things about yourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All, right. All right. Is there anything that you want to say, Jackie, before you sign up? Do you uh, sign up? Do you want to? If you're madly in love with Link Squares, do you want to pitch Link Squares a little bit about what it's about or anything you want to say? Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> heck yeah. So we partner with companies that have, are at that inflection point of contracts that at the end of the day, don't really know exactly what they agreed to because that's what you do in your, in your first couple of years. Um, and that's what you do when you sign a big big client, right? That's going to change your business. Um, but at a certain point, um, when it comes to diligence or any sort of internal audit, you have to know what's in all those contracts, but reading them one at a time is a pain. So we're like a Dropbox on steroids specifically for in-house legal and finance teams. I'm going to send you a lead. Well, trade show makeover is going to be a lead for you in about 12 months or less. 12 months or fewer. Um, awesome. Uh, she's doing her parent. So how do they reach you? We'll put, you? we'll put it in the notes, but how do they reach you? Ladies, thank you so much for being such joyful.
beautiful feminine beacons in the sales world. <laughs> <laughs> well, so thank you. Jackie at linksquares.com, right? Mm -hmm. J-A-C-K-I. Mm -hmm. Just an I. Just an I. Just an I. Well, go close some deals, or I should say, go open some doors, get those deals closed, ramp up those sellers, and keep doing what you're doing. So we're going to close out on the show. Uh, Diana, hit it. All right. Stop hoping. And start selling. That's right. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>